and our trials day by day to continue to hold up the witness usual, Yahweh's chosen branch, the one who comes in the name of Yahweh. And at this time, if you all please stand. Yahweh bless your understanding. May the peace of Yahweh be with each and every one of you. I now have the opportunity to turn it over to the great Kohan, David DePass. Shabbat Shalom. Please be seated. It's a great honor to come before the great called out ones of Yahweh. Now, if there are any Christians in the viewing audience, I ask that you pay close attention to this message. I am particularly em empathetic to Christians who are sincere and really do strive. Oh, let me take this off. I think this is kind of muffling. Uh, as I said, who are sincere and really do strive to do what they think their Bibles are telling them to do. And um, I think you, you can all appreciate that. I think that most of the adults, who, who, people who are called as adults to the house of Yahweh, probably came from, most likely came from Christianity. <clears throat> now we're doing our best to, to, um, to help you understand this message. And we do recognize that one of the biggest obstacles to understanding this message of the kingdom is the carnal mind. Now, one reason why this is such an obstacle and why people don't realize that they are being hindered by the carnal mind is that Christian preachers call the carnal mind so by, by a name that you wouldn't recognize, okay? Um, that is a highly respected name. Now, what we want to do is to expose this kind of trick, so to speak, and show you exactly how this took place. But we want to show you also and give you a lesson on the carnal mind itself so you will understand. Now, without telling you what this name is that the Christian preachers use to label the work of the carnal mind with, we want to just tell you what the carnal mind does. Okay? And the idea behind that is a rose is still a rose regardless of what you call it. If you if you call it something else, it's still a rose. Likewise, the carnal mind is still the carnal mind even if your minister calls it the most exalted name in Christianity. So here's what the carnal mind does. And I think everybody could pretty much say it with me. <laughs> the carnal mind opposes Yahweh's laws. Okay? Let's say that again. It's Pretty simple. The carnal mind opposes Yahweh's laws. I don't think our friends in Christianity really thought about that statement. But it's clearly written in Scripture. If you turn to Romans 8 verse, and we're going to read two verses. It's on page 879. It says, because the carnal mind is enmity against bitterly opposed, bitterly opposed to Yahweh. For it is not subject, and this is how it's bitterly opposed to Yahweh, for it is not subject to the law of Yahweh, nor indeed can be. It cannot be. And, you know, when you read the scriptures, and it says 
that the tree of righteousness cannot lead you wrong. And then it says the churches, they cannot lead you right. This is the basis of it. But in practical sense, in practical terms, what does this mean? What, what does it mean? Well, I want to demonstrate quickly here. Um, can you? Okay. Oh, we have some scriptures here. I'm not ready for that one yet. So let's show this one. Okay. So it says, this is Romans um, 2 verse 13. Look at what it says here. It says it clearly. Okay. For not the hearers of the law are just before Yahweh. Or be, this is from the King James Version, by the way. I just want to. Um, because I'm trying to get the attention of our Christian friends, okay? I'm using the King James Version in, these, in this instance here. For not the hearers of the law are just before Yahweh. We, we're going to substitute Yahweh. This is the house of Yahweh. But the doers of the law shall be justified. It's very clear. This is a statement in support of the laws of Yahweh. Now, what does a person who is being powered by the carnal mind, what they would do with that scripture? Well, I know Christians and I know that they, would, they know that in the scriptures it says, um, uh, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. So, here a little and there a little. Hold on. Let's say, hold on. Okay. Go to Romans 3, verse 20. And it says, Therefore, by the deeds of the law, shall no flesh be justified. See? See? No flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Okay. It's... Let's put that aside one moment. We're going to get back to it. The, the carnal mind is always seeking to go around Yahweh's laws. Not to accept Yahweh's laws. To do away with it. Okay? And this is the signature um, uh, action or the signature essence of the carnal mind. Okay, but what did someone with the spirit of Yahweh do when they saw that scripture? Does he said, "Oh, oh well, okay"? Does he does he does he go along with being an opposition to Yahweh's law? No. And this is how you will know that the world does not have Yahweh's spirit holy or Yahweh's holy spirit. Okay, because they willingly go along with the works produced by the carnal mind, to influence of the carnal mind. What, what, what did our, our pastor, the Yahweh's witness, Yahweh's servant, in these last days do when, when he saw Romans 3 verse 20 in the King James Version? He went further. He went to investigate because he's not opposed to Yahweh's laws, you see. Now, let's see if you can see this. This is um, a interlinear. It's um, scriptures for all with like the number four, and you could they have um, uh, the the second volume, the New Testament, um, all in um, an interlinear. So here we are looking at. Romans 3. You see it right there? Romans 3, right? So let's go look for Romans 3, verse 20. And this is Romans 3, verse 20. You see it right there? Let, let's see if we can get this bigger. 
Romans 3, verse 20. And I want you to notice a, 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 a Greek word, ex, right there. And notice what it means, out. Okay? This, this word was not translated in this verse. And, you know, when I do studies, I would go on um, Bible Gateway or Bible Hub or what have you. And you, would, you, can, you, can, you can reference and see that verse in all the versions that they have. And they have a whole lot, lot of versions, translations. And none of them got this right. None of them had um, translated this word here in, in, into English. But guess who did? <laughs> guess who did? Let's read what we have in the book of Yahweh. Because anyone who does anything outside of the law, you see it, it, it it's, it's translated here. If you do anything outside of the law, will not be justified before him, for through the law comes full knowledge of sin. Of course you want to know what is sin. Okay? That you don't do it. That's the idea. And there are several scriptures like that. And we have to really be empathetic to the Christians because that's what they see there. You see? And they don't have the strength there because Yahweh's spirit is not there. Now, they might feel that they have the spirit. They have the Holy Ghost. Okay? And, but these are the facts. Right? The, these are the facts. And this is how the facts um, um, play it. And you can find easily in Scripture... Go to 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9. And see here um, other scripture by the same author, by the way, who wrote Romans. In 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9, it says, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh? The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. Do not deceive yourselves. I want you to notice this. That deception, the criteria for deception, is law keeping. Whether you keep the law or not. The, the, the criteria is based on law. That's how we're going to make the assessment. And notice this. Do not deceive yourself. Neither fornicators nor God worshippers. In the King James, it says idolaters. Well, the, idol, I, I, the idolaters, they worship gods. Okay? Um, or adulterers, nor men who commit sexual perversions with boys, nor men who commit sexual perversions with other men, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, extortioners, will inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. You see that? No, this is serious. I'm, and I'm pointing it out to my Christian friends. This is serious. This is a serious criteria here. So we're going to delve into the carnal mind because we all need to know this. Okay? Today we're going to see why Yahweh made us with the carnal mind that opposes his laws. Why? But before we get really into it, I want to just draw a little bit more contrast to this, to, to a little more contrast to Yahweh's spirit. Let's put that over there. Okay? And um, so, Yachanan or John 6, verse 30, 
60, 63 tells us, talking about the spirit now, which is the counter, um, the, the, um, the, the opposite, so to speak, of the carnal mind. Okay? So this is something important for my Christian friends to hold on to here because um, they often focus on that they have the Holy Spirit. They have the Holy Ghost, as they say. We don't have a ghost. Okay? Um, but notice what, if you say you have Holy Spirit, look at what Holy Spirit is. It says, it is the Spirit that gives life. And I believe they would agree with that. Okay? The flesh is useless. The laws that I speak to you, they are Spirit. And they are life everlasting. So, the Spirit of Yahweh is in agreement with the laws of Yahweh. That's what it's saying. It's in agreement with the laws of Yahweh. And just as I demonstrated here with Romans 2 verse 13, Romans 3 verse 20. Okay? In Romans 7 verse 14 it says, For we know that the law is spiritual. The law is spiritual. But notice this part of it now. He says, but I was carnal. You see the distinction? Sold under the power of sin. That's when he was dragging the believers out. Okay? He grew up knowing and being taught the laws of Yahweh. But he was going against it. You see? And he's like he didn't have this, the strength to, 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 to do opposite. He was going after. The, the laws that he was, he was brought up with, though, was a mixture of traditions. You see? But he, he recognized the laws. But then he, he, there was a struggle there, right? So through those period of time when he was after the, the believers, this was what was going on, the anguish that was going on in his mind. In 1 Corinthians 2, um, 2 verse 11, it says, for what man understands, what, for what man understands what passes through a man's thoughts except the man's own spirit? The man's own spirit, that's the carnal mind. In the same way, no one understands the things of Yahweh. What are the things of Yahweh? His laws and his plans. Those are his things. Okay, what he plans to do. Except the spirit of Yahweh. You can't know these things except that you have the spirit here of Yahweh. So, <clears throat> we're going to go through this exercise here just to make it clear so that you can understand and you can identify the carnal mind anytime it argues against keeping Yahweh's laws. Oh, let, 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 a, let an alert come up on your, on your mind. Oh, carnal mind. Okay? Anytime it's something that is, is uh, opposing Yahweh's laws, you're going to say, er, er, you know, that something comes up out of your head or something. You could say the carnal mind is a car that Satan drives. You see? But Holy Spirit is, is, is the counterpart to the carnal mind, and it is directed by Yahweh to lead you into all truth, okay, or laws of Yahweh, right? And the truth is defined in uh, Psalms 119 verses 142 and 151. It's, de it's defined. When you get a definition from Scripture, there is no higher authority. You don't need to go to Strong's or anything, okay? When you get a definition from Scripture, it's coming from Yahweh Himself, okay? So, truth is talking about Yahweh's laws. Um, so, the carnal mind also, uh, called the flesh, obeys the law of sin, okay? 
and Yahweh's Holy Spirit is like the is like a character of a, a character of one who believes in the plan of Yahweh and the laws of Yahweh. The covenant that Yahweh is calling you to enter with him is for us to allow him to write his laws in our hearts and in our minds. So by, um, by us freely, by us freely choosing to keep his laws while denying our carnal lust and overcoming our carnal minds. You see, though that, come, that, that occurs at the same time. Okay, now, we were all born with the carnal mind, all of us, okay, and that was by design. Yahweh did not make a mistake or something um, uh, uh, that Yahweh forgot, okay, to, to remove from us. And I had something here, I, I, didn't, I didn't bring it, but, you know, you know, surgeons, they leave all kind of things inside people. I, I, had, a, I had an article saying that one, one surgeon was accused of leaving his phone inside of a woman. So, but Yahweh did not make a mistake here. Okay? Um, the, uh, although the carnal mind opposes Yahweh's laws, the carnal mind is pretty sophisticated. It's pretty sophisticated. Okay? It provides humans with some important features, such as the instinct of self-preservation. It's important. Um, self-preservation, free moral agency. I have a, where are my things? Okay, that's what I should put up there as we go. Okay, free moral agency and our desires are lust. So these are the three components, if you will, of the carnal mind. So while these components are selfish and self-serving self in nature, without them, we, could, we would probably be dead by now. Okay? The, the, an analysis of these um, three components of the carnal mind will give us a better understanding of why the carnal mind opposes Yahweh's laws. So let's start out with self-preservation. Generally, older children and adults possesses, um, possess a sense of self-preservation, okay? But babies and younger children, they don't understand danger. This is why um, we'll stop at a stoplight and, and not drink poison or what have you, unless this sense of self-preservation has become um, uh, impaired. And you could impair it with drugs, you could impair it with um, depression, uh, you know, anything, for example, that would cause a person to go and take their own life, okay? You're, you're um, impairing this, this sense, so to speak. Now, a righteous, a righteous person can override uh, this sense of self-preservation. But you could see right there, there there's going to be a resistance, you see that? Okay? But a righteous person can override this sense of preservation. And why would you want to do that? Why would you want to do that? Well, think law again. In the case of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they overrode this sense in, of the carnal mind. Okay? Because they weren't about to, to break Yahweh's law. So they chose to overrule their carnal mind's sense of self-preservation and choose to be burnt up. That's what the choice was laid out uh, to them. Instead of breaking Yahweh's law by bowing down to the idol. Okay? There, there are going to be times, brethren, and I think thoughts have been going through a lot of people's minds with all of what's going on in the world today. In the United States, um, it's like a setup. It's like a setup is going on to bring about a racial war. It's like a setup. And it's, it's, it's like it's being purposely done somehow. It's just like, you know, everything 
is gearing towards it. And I'm, it's like I always ask, what does the worst time of trouble look like? And I'm beginning to see it. Okay? And remember this, though. Remember this. It, it, we have to prepare ourselves. We cannot just wait to make the right decision. We have to prepare our minds, you know, that we can choose to give it up like, like Yeshua. Okay? But in Matthew 10, verse 23, 28, notice what it says there. And I don't have a page number for you. It says, and do not fear those who kill the body, but are not able to kill the spirit. In the King James, it says the, the soul. But rather fear him who is able to destroy both spirit and, and body in Gehenna. This needs to be clear in our minds, brethren, what we would do if, if, if we are ever in a situation like this. Yeshua Messiah is the one who gave this instruction and he followed his own inst instruction. Okay? He's our example. My Christian friends, you would agree with that, that Yeshua is your example? Notice what it says there in First Yachanan. I know time is something that usually goes too fast. But um, in Yachanan, it says in verse 6, He who says I, he abides in him is is himself also obligated to walk exactly as he walked. Exactly as he walked. Did he sin? Did he sin? No. Sin, he would have to break Yahweh's laws to sin. But that's the, that's the pattern. That's the example that was given to us. So, before his time came to be killed, he escaped from the hands of the Pharisees. Many times, but... When, he, when his time came, and when he knew that his time came, he, sub, he submitted. He submitted, okay? He did ask, yes, um, if this cup can be removed from him. He did. But he said, what did he say? But not my will, your will. You see? So, next, next component here, free moral agency. Now, Self-preservation is a specific application of free moral agency. It deserves its own category because it involves allowing yourself, choosing to allow yourself to be hurt, okay, for the keeping of Yahweh's laws. But free moral agency is our ability to choose. And if you want to turn here really quick, Deuteronomy 30 verse 15. Yahweh knew, Yahweh wouldn't have written this here or, or um, inspired this to be written unless we could choose, okay? We have to be, we have to willingly um, choose to, to, to perform Yahweh's laws and deny self all at the same time. In Deuteronomy 30 verse 15, it says, See, I have set before you this day, Life by righteousness and death and destruction. And this is being set before us every Sabbath. My friends in Christianity, it's being set before you every Sabbath at the house of Yahweh. Okay? You're not getting this choice out there. It's, either, it's a choice on how to die. Okay? It's not, there's never a choice given in the world on life. Even though they say it. Okay. Verse 16. In that I command you this day to love Yahweh, Ahab Yahweh, your father, by walking in all his ways, by keeping his laws, his statutes, and his judgments, so that you will live and multiply. And so Yahweh, your father, will bless you in the land which you go over to possess, which, which is the kingdom for us. In verse um, 19, I said, I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you this day that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses, because you are free agents to make your own 
choice between righteousness and evil. Therefore, choose life so both you and your children will live. There's no doubt about it. Yahweh knows that, you know, it can't be done by force. That's not how he's doing it. He's, he, he can't be done by force. But the way mankind thinks, this is all mankind thinks, okay? Um, uh, Yahweh don't exist, okay? Look, he don't exist. You don't, you don't have to worry about Yahweh. Look, I, I'm breaking the law, <laughs> okay? The, the, the carnal mind, the way the carnal mind thinks is if, if somebody's not going to slap me over the head, I ain't going to do it, <laughs> right? So there's a little deception there. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> so don't be deceived. Don't let the, the, the carnal mind deceive. It says, so, um, so let me ask you, you know, since Yahweh give us this choice, how has the world been doing? Did the, did the world choose righteousness? Did the world choose righteousness? That's not what the scripture says. Read it in Revelation 12, verse 9. King James Version. King James Version. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived... That, that, that word again, remember what I said, the criteria for deception is? Whether or not you keep the law. Okay? So Satan here is deceiving the whole world, it says. The whole world. He has cast out... In, he was cast out in there. But the point is, Satan has deceived the whole world. Now, my Christian friends, the whole world include a few billion people. And you know what it says here? It says that Christians remain the world's largest religious group, but they are declining in Europe. If this scripture is true, Revelation 12, verse 9. And 2.3 billion of the people in the world are Christians. Can you see that Christians would have to be deceived as a block? I'm not just talking about one a little bit. No, as a, as a block. There's no other way to, con to, 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 to see this. Anyways, time is running out. Um, uh, the next component is our desires. Turn to Genesis 6, Genesis 4. Our choices are governed by our desires. The carnal mind is the seat of our desires and our natural desires are generally, now generally, our natural desires are generally, not always, but generally sinful. Or opposed to Yahweh's laws. Okay? You know, every man that walks out there and ends up lost in, understand what I mean. Okay? And you have to practice Yahweh's law in order not to fulfill your lust. You see? So without teaching from a servant of Yahweh, we are more inclined to follow after our sinful lust. You see? In Genesis 4 verse 7, and this is from the King James Version again, I'm reading here, it says, for you do, in the King James it says, for you do well. Actually, no, book of Yahweh, I'm reading from the book of Yahweh, but I did note what the King James said. It said, if you do well, in the book of Yahweh, it says, if you do righteousness. Now think about those two, this two, two things right there. If you do well, what is that? What is it? Well. It can be anything. It's not specific. You see that? It's not helping you. But if you do righteousness, and righteousness is defined, it's defined in Deuteronomy 6, verse 25, okay? As us keeping Yahweh's laws. See, it all comes back down to that. It's simple. It's not that hard. It's simple, okay? 
If you do righteousness, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do righteousness, in other words, if you're thinking of doing unrighteousness, sin is crouching at your door. Notice what it says next. The desire to sin is with you. When you go to the mall, it is with you. Wherever you go, it is with you. You see that? And Yahweh made it such that it's with you. Because in order to put his desires in you, you're going to have to refuse yours. You see? He, Yahweh is making sure that nobody gets into the kingdom except by their choice. That's what he's doing. So opposing Yahweh's laws is, is ingrained in our psyche. Uh, okay, great. <laughs> okay, it's, it's ingrained in our psyche. Okay. Um, and it, notice there, I'm going to give you the definition of sin now because I don't think I did it before. Um, but everybody here knows it, right? It's all A students over here. Um, first, Yakanan 3 verse 4. Whosoever sins, this is what you do, you transgress the law. That is clear. Now, I never met a Christian who says it's okay to sin. I've never met one. They, all, they, they always say, yeah, you shouldn't sin. Well, if you sin, what are you doing? You're breaking Yahweh's laws. Okay, keep that in mind. For sin is the transgression of the law. And you know that he was manifest to take away your sin. No, I'm sort of giving away the name that they use here. Okay, to, to, to um, call Yeshua. Because um, in verse 5, um, in, in verse 5, um, it's, it talk about he who manif he was manifest to take away our sins. So you see, you know, this is how slick Satan is, though. Um, but it says there's two ways to take away sins. There's two ways, right? Either you take away the law, okay? You can take away the law, or um, you can obey the law. Okay? Which one do you think the carnal mind is going to do? Take away the law. Do away with it. Okay? Do away with it. So, this is what um, uh, has occurred. I got to move on here. Um, so, you know, a lot of people come to the house of Yahweh and and they come and they get baptized, right? And they learn about the carnal mind and everything, call about what I said, and they think, man, I got this thing beat. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm righteous, I'm perfect right now. Okay, I got this thing beat. Only to realize that the carnal mind, it don't go easy. Okay? The carnal mind survived baptism. Okay? It's like a garden weed that keeps coming back. You know, this is why we must overcome the carnal mind like Yeshua did. Now, I did miss a point that I wanted to say here, and I want to say it. Hebrews 4 verse 15 shows that Yeshua was tempted but did not sin. The fact that he was tempted means that he has desires. You see? The desire is like the, is like the, is like the um, grasshopper on the hook or the worm on the hook. And, and, you, and you, you, you going around it, the, you're the fish going around it. Now, if you snap you got caught. Okay? But you can, you can do like what Yeshua did. He never snapped. All right? Okay. But Christian preachers, Christian preachers, listen now. This is important. I don't see nobody. Um, uh, okay? Christian preachers teach that the carnal mind is gone at baptism. And guess who enters? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ enters in the person's heart so they are able to automatically live righteous. Automatically live righteous. Tell me, tell me if that, that's, not, that's, not, that's not what they, they teach. They are saved at that very moment of baptism. But I want you to notice something here. Don't miss this. Isn't Jesus Christ the one 
that Christian preachers claim did away with the laws? Who do we know do away with laws or try to oppose laws? Who do we know? The carnal mind. They don't realize, brethren, that the Jesus Christ is the personification of the carnal mind on steroids. That's what Jesus Christ is. And I want to point that out. And I'm not being sarcastic or anything like that. This is the facts. This is the truth. And they're taking away eternal life from you. The whole world. Look at the whole world. If they're not like, they're okay, they might not be all Christians, but in one way or the other, they're doing away with Yahweh's laws. They don't keep Yahweh's laws. That's the common thread that comes be, 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 uh, over every, everybody in the world. That's why the world is deceived. Brethren, all of Christianity got played. Three card Monty. Okay? They think that they're getting the king of righteousness. But that's not what they got. They got the queen of hearts. That's what they got. They didn't get the king of righteousness. The king of righteousness is in the house of Yahweh. So, that's the value of knowing and understanding the carnal mind, brethren. What is the carnal mind? The carnal mind opposes Yahweh's laws. Don't forget it. Don't, don't, don't participate. Overcome it, brethren. So with that, I pray that Yahweh bless your understanding. Woo, woo, woo. A lot of things here to pick up. And I'll turn it over for closing prayer. If you all raise your hands. Heavenly Father Yahweh, this is Deacon Tobiah. Come to Father Deacon Benjamin from the body of Cons. We pass you shall and Yeshua Messiah. I thank you for the Sabbath that you've blessed us with, um, that we can come meet together and learn. Please help us to take to heart everything we've learned today. Please bless the food and drink that we're about to partake of. Please bless Pastor with the full use of his subconscious mind connection. Please release the you need from prison. Please make us so you want us to be, because that's how I want to be. And please um, guide and inspire us every single day and all these things the Yashim Messiah's name. Hallelujah, I praise God.